Palestinian civilians are scrambling to flee Gaza's southern city of Rafah. And jury selection gets underway today in the federal corruption trial of Democratic Senator Robert Menendez. Good morning. I'm Windsor Johnston with NPR News, and here are today's top stories. The Biden administration is turning up the pressure on Israel to reconsider its plans for a potential full-scale offensive in the southern Gaza city of Rafah. NPR's Lauren Frere reports with Israel stepping up its assault, many Palestinian civilians are scrambling to get out. Rafah has been under airstrikes for months. Now it's being hit with artillery from Israeli tanks that rolled in a week ago. Those tanks cut off the border crossing with Egypt, which is the main gateway for food and fuel coming into Gaza and injured people going out. Last night, Israel did say it opened a crossing in the north of Gaza to trucks carrying flour in, but hunger and shortages persist. That's NPR's Lauren Frere reporting from Tel Aviv. Jury selection gets underway in the federal corruption trial of Senator Robert Menendez. The New Jersey Democrat is accused of being at the center of an international bribery scheme. NPR's Ryan Lucas reports Menendez is charged with accepting hundreds of thousands of dollars in bribes in exchange for using his influence to benefit three businessmen and the governments of Egypt and Qatar. Menendez goes on trial alongside two of the New Jersey businessmen who prosecutors say gave the senator and his wife lavish bribes, including cash, a Mercedes-Benz convertible, and bars of gold. In return, Menendez allegedly intervened in state and federal prosecutions on their behalf and used his influence as a U.S. senator to take actions benefiting their businesses, as well as the governments of Egypt and Qatar. Menendez has pleaded not guilty to the 16 criminal charges he faces, including bribery and obstruction of justice. He says he's being targeted because he's a prominent Latino, and he says he will prevail at trial, which is expected to last up to two months. Ryan Lucas, NPR News, Washington. The supply of illicit fentanyl has increased significantly. NPR's Martin Costi reports that's according to a new study funded by the National Institutes of Health. The study tracks law enforcement seizures of illicit drugs and fentanyl's rise to market dominance. Police seized 50,000 fentanyl pills in 2017. Last year, that number was 115 million. Dr. Nora Volkov is director of the National Institute on Drug Abuse at the NIH. She says these days, when she does research on supposed heroin users, the urine tests show that they're all really just using fentanyl. None of them has heroin. It's everything is fentanyl. So yes, it has just permeated the whole illicit market. The study found the fentanyl supply has expanded fastest in the western U.S., which now accounts for most of the fentanyl seized by law enforcement. Martin Costi, NPR News, Seattle. The criminal hush money trial of former President Donald Trump resumes in New York City today. NPR's Andrea Bernstein reports prosecutors are expected to call Trump's former attorney and fixer Michael Cohen to the witness stand. Cohen's guilty plea in 2018 set off the winding investigation that became the Manhattan DA's case, charging Trump with falsifying business records. Now, Cohen will take the stand to knit together the prosecution's case. That Trump was so concerned about Stormy Daniels going public after the release of the Access Hollywood tape that he authorized a hush money payment to unlawfully influence the election and then covered it up by pretending to pay Cohen a legal retainer instead of a reimbursement. Jurors have seen checks, meeting memos, photos, and heard tape backing up Cohen's account. The defense says he's an unreliable liar and that Cohen did legal work for Trump. Trump has pleaded not guilty. Andrea Bernstein, NPR News, New York. Having a baby is expensive. The diapers, the formula, the child care. Now, medical debt has become another cost of having children in America. Noam Levy with NPR's partner, KFF Health News, has more. Heather Crivellari and her husband made a lot of financial preparations before having their first child. But when Crivellari and her newborn daughter came home from the hospital, there were still mountains of bills to navigate. It really felt like a full-time job some days, getting the baby down to sleep and then getting on the phone and trying to, you know, I'd set up one payment plan and then a new bill would come that afternoon. Crivellari and her husband are both public school teachers in Illinois. Having a baby left them about $5,000 in debt. New parents in the U.S. with private insurance on average face more than $3,000 in uncovered medical bills. If there are complications, out-of-pocket costs can run several times that. 
That's Noam Levy with KFF Health News reporting. This is NPR.